never have the chance to meet. You guys may have heard the idea that if you put a frog into a pot of boiling water, it'll jump out. But if you put a frog in a pot of room temperature water and you slowly turn up the heat, the frog won't notice and it won't try to jump out until it's too late. And I had heard this before, and I wanted to do an episode on it, so I googled it. And this is fun for me, because I get to learn new stuff. So it turns out that doesn't happen, realistically. If you did that in real life, that wouldn't happen. If you put a frog into a pot of boiling water, it would die automatically, because it, it, the boiling water would kill it. If you put a frog into a pot of room temperature water and you slowly raise the heat, it will try to get out. It will try and it will try and it will try. And if the, there's room and space for it, it will jump out. Um, the fable or the story comes about because corporate consultants and companies want you to think that companies change so slowly that most of the employees and often managers don't see the change and can't deal with it. And this is coming directly from um, an Australian government science uh, website. So I will link that up so you guys can see the science because I... I'm a biology major uh, at heart and found that to be interesting. So um, how does this relate to coaching? I think we can move the needle, boil the water, if you will, in a few different ways. We can have our culture, if you've been in your program for a while and your culture is just how we do things here, if your kids know how we do things here, your water is already boiling. You have this thing that people can either look at and say, hey, I want in on that, or hey, I don't want in on that. Or you can slowly start to move that needle and slowly bring the water to a boil. Um, And oftentimes we want our players to come in with their excitement already there, with knowing exactly how we do things here, why we do them, and why it's important to do them the way we do them. For me, I have to kind of reel that back. I expect 100% enthusiasm and 100% fitness and 100% skill and togetherness on those first few days. And I have to remember that the water's not boiling yet. So I have to slowly adjust. And with new players and new dynamics that come in, we have to slowly move that needle. And sometimes we're, we're, we're probably better off doing it that way because we can make adjustments along the way. Um, so what I hope to create within our Callable Girl soccer program is that over the next couple of years, and it's, I'm so fortunate that there was one head coach and his brother was the assistant for the first 35 years that the program existed because what they built and the culture and the memories that every girls soccer player has is because of them. I'm so grateful to that. With me as the new head coach, I want to continue those traditions. I want to make them my own, which is the advice that that the old head coach had given me. And I want the kids who are coming up to see that pot of boiling water, see the way the call girl soccer does things, and be excited to jump into it, to say, yep, I went in on that. And I want former players to come back and say, yep, this is exactly what I wanted to be a part of. It's exactly why I had such a great experience. Like, I, I, I love that pot of boiling water. Um, so I just want to remind you and challenge you as a coach, move that needle slowly, but understand that the little adjustments that you make are either going to attract the right people or repel the wrong people. I appreciate you. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Keep getting better every day.